Welcome to the Cheapskate Chronicles, the show to find the highest slash lowest quality games on Steam for zero dollars and zero cents, plus tax, which is also zero dollars and zero cents. Since these are free games, we can't expect every single one of them to be a gem of the internet, but we can analyze what makes the good games amazing and laugh at the games that are not so great. Let's begin. Hello, I like money. Boring. It's just an unimaginative clicker game. I feel like you would like this game if you were poor and you just want to know what it feels like to make it rain without making a huge mess. The one good thing about this game is that it's a perfect waste of time to make you realize that life is fleeting and you could be doing something productive with your day, but instead you're downloading free games on Steam because you have nothing else to live for. Yay existence! Also it reminds me of Cookie Clicker, which is the best clicker game ever created. The reason Cookie Clicker works so well is because there's a theme around cookies. You can literally hire a grandma and you can use these cookies to buy other things like factories to make more cookies. I also like how the game's purchasables are just right in front of you so you don't have to go scrounging around for upgrades. Plus, it's just fun. Literally, while writing the script for this, I pulled up Cookie Clicker for research purposes and I couldn't stop playing. The reason I brought up Cookie Clicker is that Make It Rain has none of these things. The only theme I see here is money, and even then, that seems like a pretty vague and convoluted category. You can buy anything from lemonade stands, to hiring a lobbyist, to buying a piggy bank, to buying a flower cart. I just... I don't understand the point. What, what, what am I aiming for? For some reason, this game is laid out as if it were a mobile game, but I got it off of Steam, so... Uh, honestly, I'm starting to question existence. As Lyra and the Pope said, <clears throat> please don't waste your time with this garbage. Please. There are so many reasons why this game is the first good game to be analyzed in the series. The storytelling is very simplistic yet builds an emotional connection. The aesthetic of the early 2000s in the form of Windows Messenger. The references to said 2000s bands and movies. The fact that it actually feels like I'm talking to a human being through this fake messenger layout even though it's obviously a game since when you type out on the keyboard it's just preset dialogue this game has been labeled as a visual novel to many and and generally that's what it is but to me it means so much more you can even argue that it takes the whole visual novel genre to a whole different level giving it a fresh new concept to this specific genre it's such a refreshing take that it's grown enough popularity for a sequel which is also pretty good except that isn't free so I guess it isn't gonna be an episode 2! I played this game so many years ago, and I still remember the fun I had playing. I still remember the emotions I felt as I read the words that Emily was typing. I still remember that Emily loves chasing cars. As in Snow Patrol, not actually chasing cars. That would be a pretty funny image. At this point, there's not much else to say without spoiling the game. Honestly, I don't have any criticisms for this game other than the fact that they say a few swear words here and there. Other than that, it's worth your time. <laughs> there's a review that literally just says Windows XP. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> this game is so bad, I don't even want to know it exists. Die Pig Die is an alpha battle royale game with literally nobody on the servers. I don't want to be alone. You can just tell that somebody saw Fortnite was immensely popular so they tried to make their own version, which spectacularly and miserably failed. The first hint that this game is garbage is the fact that I had to put in my email before I even started playing. It doesn't even say why. I probably lost one of my email accounts to this landfill. Who knows at this point? When this game finally loads to the main menu, I now understand why this game has so many negative reviews, and I haven't even started playing it yet. The music is just way, way too loud, so I, I go to the slider bar to turn it down, and, and there's only one slider bar. Why? My last criticism for the main menu is that the guy right here looks like a bootleg version of the medic from TF2. Oh 
Oh gosh. When the game loads up, we get a clipboard explaining the whole game, saying, Hey, you gotta find some codes. Because you have to. After about a minute of trying to figure out how in the world to exit out of this stupid clipboard, I realized immediately that the controls are rough and jagged. And not smooth whatsoever. <laughs> While trudging around this game, reevaluating my life, wondering why I'm still playing it, there's a few things that I've noticed. Some of the words on the HUD are in Spanish, and I don't know why that is. Another thing is that there are flying bots in this game. I did the logical thing by picking up a gun and aiming at the bot because, you know, you gotta shoot something, right? When I shot and hit the bot, it does nothing. The bots are invincible. So I ended up dying. This final element is just the icing on the cake, and frankly, I'm just so done at this point that I don't even care anymore. On the map, there are toilets. And if you do not use these toilets, you die. You just straight up die, and there's no reasoning, there's no logic, it's just so stupid, why? What do I do? Can I stop playing the game? Please help. If I only see one good thing from this game, it's the fact that Fortnite now looks like a masterpiece. Is this even game? Honestly unmotivated, I would not be surprised if they used this game as a torture device. I knew I had to download this game when I saw this beautifully animated cinematic cutscene that portrays the concept of the game without explicitly saying it. Also, the reviews are mostly positive, so there, there, there's that. There's that thing. This Battle Royale's in-game animation is so smooth, and the art style is so crisp and clean. I personally really like it. It flows really nice with the game mechanics. For a free game, it's definitely up there with Fortnite animation-wise. I ended up playing this game for four hours, mostly with my friends, and I have to say, we had a blast. Once we learned about the upgrading slash crafting wheel and started using it proficiently, we literally laughed our heads out when I figured out that you can literally jump 200 feet in the air with an ability. This is where my excitement level just peaked. <laughs> Referring to the crafting wheel, it's as simple as you can get. You just click to craft and boom, you got yourself a mixtape. This is Minecraft. But in order to craft such a fire mix, you gotta cut down some wimpy kid looking trees. Not, not these strong bad trees. And that leads to my first criticism. You have all these trees, right? All of these massive strong bad trees that you think would be harvestable. But no, you can only take the life of the ones who look like that they have no meat on their hands. <laughs> Which is actually kind of messed up now that I think about it. However, looking back after playing this game for so many hours, I understand why this is the case. Resources are sparse, but very necessary when it comes to winning the game. If you're able to cut down all of the trees, then Greg is able to become the god of sniping and make infinite arrows. Yes, Greg, I'm still upset that you keep winning at this game. How do you, how do you do, you're fired, you're fired. Actually, no, I can't do that because then my channel would die. RIP. Along with this being a battle royale, it's also a survival game. You gotta survive the cold by crafting a mixtape. You gotta survive the purple fo forbidden areas. Otherwise, you're dead, son. You gotta survive an enemy possibly one-shotting you because you forgot to look at your health bars again, idiot. Besides hiding from everyone and praying to the Lord Almighty Jesus that Satan doesn't murder you with an axe. Gathering resources is also another key part in this cartoon version of 2017 Tomb Raider. The three resources you can get are wood, electronics, and leather. With these items, you have the ability to make arrows, the power to jump 200 feet in the air, and the will to glide across the map. There are many more abilities such as teleport, arena, and radar, but the ones that I mentioned before are my favorites. Although I'm praising this game to be better than Fortnite, I just have a few a few nitpicks. One of these slight details is that the intro loading screen is so laggy. However, my PC is a piece of garbage, so I'm probably just gonna blame it on that. The other thing is that when I played this game for the first time, voice chat wasn't enabled for me, yet I could hear everybody else in the lobby. So I was basically just talking to dead air since I didn't manually change the voice settings. Glad to know that strangers weren't ignoring me, although TBH, 
I, I honestly wouldn't blame them. To sum it up, axes are pretty c- Nope, that's- that's not it. Um, ah, ah, here it is. Stop playing Fortnite for one day and download this game. I hope this series brings you some entertainment, some comedy, any reason to not play Die Pig a Die. If any of these games pique your interest, try them out. Leave your experiences down in the comments. If you would like to see weekly videos from me, please be sure to subscribe and press that bell. All my links to everything are in the description. Be sure to check out my Discord server. That's a new thing that's up. Thank you to all my beautiful patrons on Patreon. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week.